Hey again, it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. So I'm getting ready to make my seed starting calendar for 2023 and I thought I should do a video to share how I store and organize all my seeds. I thought maybe that would be helpful to you guys. So that is what I'm going to cover in this video. Now I used to just take my seeds and kind of throw them in envelopes or throw them in a cardboard box and they were super disorganized. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. So now I actually have a system and it is really easy and quick quick to find the kind of seeds that I'm looking for and keep track of what I have because let me tell you I have a lot more than I used to. So the containers that I use I got off of Amazon and I will link them down below in the description to this video. I think they're actually made to store um, maybe photos. Um, they're a plastic container. They have a nice flip top lid so they open from the end and then the lid flips open and then there are um, divided compartments here. There's four compartments in this one and you can see they're separated with a plastic divider. So this is never going to move around because they slide in the little slots here. And then that's how I separate into my different categories and then I put the label right on um, the divider there. And then I also have this larger size which this is my favorite size. So in the smaller one, I put all of my hardy annuals and I'll go through how I divide these two. And then in the bigger one, this is all of my summer flowers. So this one holds a lot. Now vegetables, I use this size and so that's at home. I'm not going to go through that today, but I just wanted to go through with you guys how I sort and organize all of my flower seeds. Um, now I keep these in a closet and so they're not in direct sunlight and it doesn't get really hot or anything. You always want to make sure to keep moisture away from your seeds and you don't want them exposed to really hot temperatures that can affect the seed and the um, germination of them. But let's get to how I actually organize these. So this is my hardy annuals. And if you are not familiar what hardy annuals is, they're also known as cool flowers. These are annual flowers that you can start much earlier in the season. You can actually plant them out before your last frost of your season to get earlier blooms. So I like to keep these separate just because these are some of the seeds that I am working with earlier than a lot of my summer seeds. So I have four different compartments in this container. Up in the front, my first category is snapdragons because that is what I have the most of. I grow a ton of snapdragons, as you can see. So many different varieties. These are some of the um, main bulk of the flowers that I do in my earlier spring bouquets. The next section I have devoted to Lysianthus and straw flower. I'm growing more Lysianthus this year than I have any other year and so I am really excited for that. So that gets its own section with straw flower. The next section is devoted to Yarrow and Rebecca because I grow multiple varieties of both of those. And then the last one says miscellaneous and that is just all the other um, random packets of hardy annuals. So this one actually has a lot in it. So it's the one that is not as organized obviously. Um, but just some of the varieties I have in here are uh, Calendula, I have some Scabiosa. And see, I'm even having a hard time holding on to these because there's so many in here. I have a random packet of sweet peas, Larkspur, Nigella. Um, I have a couple Dianthus packets, Delphinium, um, Feverfew, and that looks like that's it. One more um, Fama White Scabiosa. So all the miscellaneous goes in the back, but the sections that I have labeled um, as far as the variety of flower, those are the ones that I use mostly. And so when I go in here to do my seed starting, it's really easy for me to just find exactly what I need and keep track of what I have from year to year. Um, I had some snapdragons, for example, left over from last year. So when I was doing all my seed ordering, I could e easily look at my snapdragon folder and see what I needed to order and what I had left over from last year. So it just kind of streamlines the process also. All right, let's get into the summer bin. And again, I will link these bins down below. They are so handy and I love the fact that they have a handle on the top because it makes it so easy just to carry it around and then shift it into my closet. So right on top here, you'll see one big packet of sunflowers. This 
I could have fit it in by folding it, but the sunflower bin was that full that it wouldn't fit. So I just placed that on top. So my summer flowers I have divided by types um, a little bit differently. The first one I have is Xenia. And if you thought I had a lot of Snapdragons, look at all of the Xenias I have. They definitely need their own bin. And this one has eight bins, so double the size of the other one. And again, these just slide in and they lock together so there's no moving around, things don't shift. My second bin I call fillers. And so all of my filler flowers and greenery have their own space, which is really handy. Because if I'm thinking about what I'm gonna offer in my cut flower bouquets and trying to think of focal flowers, accent flowers, you know, rounds, talls, then I come to fillers and I wanna make sure that I have enough fillers. So in here I have things like um, poor man's orchid, mignonette, honeywort, I have multiple varieties of cress. My Bupleurum is in here. I have some dill. Um, I did put my amaranth in here. Um, cress, I already said that. Bupleurum, mahogany splendor, hibiscus, and then a few varieties of basil. That is all in the filler category. Then the next one is Celosia. Celosia also gets its own bin. Then I have Status, Asters, and Gonfrina together because I grow multiple varieties of these, but not as much as say Xenias. So I've grouped all these together. Sunflowers, of course, get their own bin um, because I mean, you can never have enough sunflowers and that is one of the main summer focal flowers. So they get their own bin plus this big packet, which I said just um, rests on top. Then pumpkins. I have put pumpkins in with my cut flowers because pumpkins I include in with my cut flower sales income. Um, if you watched my big market video, the end of the season big market that I did la did the end of this year, um, I think it was September 24th, I took probably 350 to 400 pumpkins to this market. I sold all but 16, which I was really happy with. But pumpkins are something that I include in with my cut flowers income wise because it all goes into that same um, income part when I'm doing all of my, you know, all the QuickBooks and all that. So pumpkins gets a um, bin in with my cut flowers, not my vegetables. And it's like zinnias, you can never have too many different varieties of pumpkins. I have so many. And these, some of these are from last year, some are new for this year, so that definitely needs its own bin. Then I have a miscellaneous folder, just like I did for the Hardy Annuals. Um, some of the miscellaneous ones in here would be my stock, um, my ageratum, I have an ornamental kale, all my cosmos are in here. Um, I have some lace flower, some syrinth, cone flower, crispedia. So just a lot of miscellaneous ones in there. And then the last bin I have labeled non-cut flowers. So these are things that I'll use in my garden as pollinators, such as um, some calendula and nasturtium that I don't necessarily grow for cut flowers. And then I do have um, a few other things in here. Um, some coleus I'm gonna be starting. I have some blushing and black-eyed Susie vine that I grew up a trellis just for a wall cover in the garden. And then, I have about six different varieties of petunias. I grew some petunias from seed last year. They grew wonderfully and I use them out in uh, my planters in front of my business and also in my landscaping at home. Last year was a trial year. I was super pleased with them. So this year I'm growing a lot more in hopes to fill my window boxes and my planters in front of my business with these. So this bin is devoted also to those petunias. So anyway, I hope you guys just enjoyed seeing this short video on how I store and organize all of my seeds. I'm getting ready, like I said, to do my seed starting calendar, which probably will be the next video you see. And I know a lot of you like to see that because it's really helpful for you when you're planning your seed starting calendar. Now I am a zone 5A, and so if you are not that same zone, you, obviously you have to adapt that into your zone. Um, but I know it's really helpful, and I watch other people's videos to see when they start their seeds too, just to kind of think it out and plan your season. So. 
that is what I will be doing next now that I have gone through all of my seeds. So stay tuned for that video next. We'll see you soon.